Good morning. Please be seated. Jesus said, You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed, to sit at the feet of Jesus. Today we're going to be talking about Mary and Martha and the choices that we, we all make in our lives. How we go about living. And unfortunately, the choice that we make dictates the life that we live. But we'll get into that a little later on in the service. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 51. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walks is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their hearts, whose tongues utter no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others, who despise the vile person but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their minds, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. And it says, Create in me a clear heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Let us just close our eyes and, and think about the week ahead. Think about the week past. Think about the choices that we've all made. And think how we, as God's children, have related to our neighbors around us. There's a prayer on the screen which you can read in your hearts as I go through it. Thank you, Father, that in your wisdom you do not renew and restore the old-fashioned sinful nature in Adam, but you give us a new nature, a new born-again life received through faith in Christ. 
Thank you for the lessons we can learn from biblical saints like David, who was cleansed of his sin when he confessed his faults and cried out to you. Thank you for the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that you would point out all the areas in my life that grieve you or quench your ongoing work within, creating me a clear heart. And I pray and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And may Christ be seen in me as I submit to you. The Spirit's leading and do only those things I hear from him. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Let us stand now as we sing our first song, which is a pledge to the Lord to make us a channel of his peace. Please stand. Please be seated. I'm going to hand over to who's on duty today to do the Jerry? All yours. Do that. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay. 
for the smile. <laughs> that's better. That's much better. Welcome uh, for the visitors. Any visitors? Would you put up your hand? Oh, members. Okay, great stuff. And while I'm talking about visitors, that, that just reminds me. The Reverend had spoken to some of you around new members, grounds or filling in the forms, um, uh, and also information that is supplied. At the end of the service, you can come to me, or it's outside there, there's, uh, to, you can collect it, fill in the form, and take the information. With it. Okay, that's as well. I'm busy that. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Can we? Thank you. Okay, the birthdays, any birthdays? I know it's Sonia's birthday, I think it was on the 16th or something like that. Sonia's away at the moment um, in, uh, on holiday, well during holiday, and she'll be back, uh, I think, about the 22nd or 23rd. All right? Uh, so we have to uh, work without her today. Any um, anniversaries? I can, of course, I can have a look on my. Notify those who are okay. Mandela Day uh, for the Mandela Day maintenance is scheduled, uh, and I think we're, uh, that's going to be on Saturday. Or we're going to have it's already man, but on Saturday we're going to have Mandela Day at the LBA. Yeah. So those people who want to come, particularly for some of the uh, matters. Um, uh, of maintenance. There's quite a big crack in the toilet, outside toilet. Uh, I will be here as well, but anybody that comes to, wants to come and help me, that would be great. Um, we will try and fill that, uh, that, that crack up and we will have to watch it in, in future as it goes on. So just bear that in mind and, and that we honor um, uh, the work that was done by Mandela. Um, Rona, uh, thanks. We will run in the last week of every month, and we had that last week, uh, last month, which was very successful, and that will run until the end of October. Okay, and please um, clearly mark the Rona uh, in, the, uh, in the references. In other words, when you Rona, uh, whatever you put there, Rona. Okay, so we'll, uh, so that we know that money goes to Rona. And let's gear up with Thanksgiving and remember the goodness of God. Um, in our lives. Okay, thank you. On the 9th of August, this WSA will have a retreat in the hall of the church to celebrate Women's Day, uh, and all are welcome. Okay, then on the 20, um, uh, 20th of August, there will be a, a retreat held here, at, uh, that's at Saturday, uh, um, called Sharing Intimate Space with God, and all are invited to come to have a special time with God, let's all get ready for that spiritual meeting. We've already arranged with the Seventh-day Adventists that like use of the church on, 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 that, on Saturday not to be present. They won't use the church. So we'll have the whole facility available for us. Okay, the sec next second sale will then be on, on the 6th of August. And if you're available to assist, that will greatly help in that. Okay, confirmation classes will be resumed then on the 24th of July. And then some, I've already mentioned that the, the, the correct date was the 22nd, that should be back. Okay, any pastoral needs, please contact uh, officers, um, and there's a number there, uh, and or Reverend Kibani directly. Okay. Um, uh, the sisters of the WA ladies are greatly appreciated to help us at the door. It's nice to, to stand there with the, uh, with the WA lady. Thank you very much this morning. Okay, and, um, uh, if you feel called um, to assist with the door duty, to please speak to student on duty. I think it's uh, great if somebody's welcoming people coming in and, and say, uh, uh, welcome to uh, the service, and we pray that God will be here with you, with you during this, this service. And then please remember to bring bottle tops. I think there's the, the, the um, uh, basket is outside there. Uh, margarine tubs, to, uh, yogurt tubs, soft into container. Thing. And uh, can I just request that, uh, if possible, we try and clean those tops before we, we actually bring them in, so that we can, uh, because otherwise that poses a problem. Thank you very much. And then please remember the guard go a car guard, um, who does a great job for us outside there, to keep our cars safe. 
And then, uh, well, very importantly, if you need uh, prayer or want to pray, uh, you can come uh, in front here at the end of the service, and if we uh, leave it, we, we can be someone to assist you. Okay, thank you. Um, then the next thing that I have to say is Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, we're going to do the tithes and offering now. So, thank you very much. Thanks, Yal. As I said in the first service, I have a confession, but I'm only going to make the confession after the next little video. The video is 
a little seven-year-old girl singing the Lord's Prayer. Let's just listen to it and think about our, our own Lord and how we relate to him. confession that I have is that I, I did that that video deliberately to advertise the ladies retreat day on the 9th of August because I'll be doing for the first session from 9 o'clock through to, to 12 o'clock I will be doing the unpacking of the Lord's Prayer a reinterpretation of the prayer from the Greek which makes a, a huge big difference the way we say the Lord's Prayer and the way we understand it. Plus, it will be largely focusing on why we pray and how we go about praying. You know, in the Greek, the, for the one word love, there are 23 different words for the word love. So when you interpret the Lord's Prayer, which it was written in the Greek, you have to make sure that you've chosen the correct words to give the interpretation 
that we're looking for. So now let's move on and we go through to, so let's stand now as we sing Amazing Grace. Please stand. seated. Juanita is going to do our first reading this morning and that comes from Colossians 1 and she's going to be reading from verse 15 through to 28. Good morning friends. This passage is entitled The Supremacy of the Son of God. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. 
for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile himself, sorry, to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become his servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness and the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is the Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Now, now uh, our next song is in Christ alone. Let us stand as we sing that, please. In Christ alone.
short prayer which I'd like you to to say with me dear father your son Jesus Christ has united our burdens and healed our spirits we lift up the prayers of our hearts for those still burdened those seeking healing and those in the church and the world hear our prayers that we may love you with our whole being and willingly share the concerns of our neighbour. Amen. Our Gospel reading today comes from Luke 10, and I'm reading from verse 38 through to 40. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She was a sister, she had a sister, called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My message today is a little different, the presentation is a little different to what you're possibly accustomed to. It's talking about Mary of Bethany. So I'm going to start with a, with a few four or five slides to start with, just to give you a little bit of background to where we're going. How many of you had to do a little work before you were able to come here to worship this morning? I certainly know I had a couple. I had to get up pretty early to get here by uh, just before seven. And there were a lot of things that needed my attention before I could leave home. 
I'd like to introduce, to introduce you to Mary and to Martha, two sisters who learned a lesson from Jesus about the balance of work and worship. The balance of work and worship. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Mary and Lazarus. Now you remember Lazarus was the brother who Jesus raised from the dead. Obviously Jesus had a special relationship with his family. They lived in a small village of Bethany, easily within walking distance from Jerusalem. Jesus and his disciples visited their home on at least three occasions that we know of. It is spoken of, a, of Mary's, oh, sorry, as Martha's house, where the three siblings all lived together. The siblings seemed to be young, according to the Bible. Martha appeared to be the eldest, although the scripture does not specify, say, specifically say that. It is estimated that there were at least 15 people at this meal, and Martha wanted everything to be just right, like most ladies do when they're presenting their house to visitors. She was a thoughtful hostess, much in her own behavior is commendable. So today we're going to be focusing on the passage that we've just read. Now, how many of you have heard the story before? I'm sure that many of you have, have gone through your Bible readings and have read the story of Mary and Martha. At least most of us over the last three years, as we go through the lectionary, have probably read the story of Mary and Martha. But I'm sure that you've heard this particular story many, many other times, possibly even when you were at Sunday school. And I wonder with each time that you've heard the story, who do you identify with? Do you identify with Mary on the one side or Martha on the other side? Who do you, in the story, find yourself most likely to relate to? Are you a Mary, or are you a Martha? I'd like to say something right at the very beginning of this message, something that's very important to all of us as we hear this. And let's take it to heart here today. When we hear the story of Mary and Martha, there's temptation. In actual fact, it's a huge big pitfall for us to focus on Mary's actions. Maybe it's the model to which we aspire. We all want to sit at Jesus' feet and listen to him, don't we? In fact, the gospel writer did not intend that in this case. Luke did not intend for the story to be heard in isolation. Luke did not intend for us to view our relationship with Christ as a simple, straightforward decision between being Mary or Martha. Now Jesus calls us to be both Mary and Martha's, depending on our circumstances and the situation. And he calls Mary to take on the role of Martha at times, just as he calls Martha to take on the role of Mary at times. You see, the story of Mary and Martha is the story of one person who sees and does, and another person who listens and hears. Sees and does, listens and hears. Winita often says to me, I listen to her, but I seldom hear what she's saying. And I think we do all of this in our own lives. There have been times when we've all been asked to make choices. And we knew deep within ourselves what choice we should make. And we convince ourselves many times that it was the absolute right choice. And if we had the opportunity of doing it again, 
we would make that same choice over and over again. And we would do it with thanksgiving and gratitude. I had to make a choice this morning when I got up, and it was only three degrees outside. Do I put on a jersey and a jacket or a jacket only? And when he just said, put on what you feel comfortable in. And that was a choice I had to make. Then there have been other times when we had to go through life making choices that maybe we don't necessarily agree with. We were forced into those choices through circumstances. And maybe we could have done things a little differently. But if we had the chance, but if we had the chance, would we change our choice? I said, suspect that most of us would make that same choice again and again. There are some people who made the choice this morning not to come to the service for whatever reason. There are other people sitting here this morning that made the choice to come to service. Too often, we equate the choice we make and the subsequent approval or rejection with our goodness and our worthiness, our acceptance, our faithfulness, our lovableness. So often we make choices, we make the choice that we want other people to appreciate. In other words, we don't make the choice that we believe in. We make the choice that we know will please somebody else. And that's most of what history has done to Mary and Martha. Mary made the better choice. Jesus said, and we quickly conclude that we should be like Mary and not like Martha. We would rather sit and listen rather than be active and busy. Mary was blessed with a thoughtful life and Martha with an active life. And much of Christ's history has seen this, this throughout life as the most perfect way to go about things. That's one reading of this text, but it's not, unfortunately, the only reading. Is Mary, in your mind, better more holy, more loved, more acceptable to Jesus? If Jesus is saying that Mary, to the exclusion of Martha, is the way we want to be the next time we, we make a decision, I don't think so. I'll give you an example. We need to ask me to run some errands and help with the house and the cleaning and the washing of the dishes. And I'll tell her, no, babe, not my job. You go ahead and do it. That's circumstances. I'm going to choose the better part and just sit here and watch television or work on my sermon. I don't think that's what Jesus is saying to us. Jesus is making an observation and not a judgment. When you read the word, remember that. Jesus makes observations and not judgments. Remember what he said, judge not, let ye be judged. I don't think that this text is even about Mary and or Martha. I think it's about you and me. It's about us, and it's about the choices that we make, the choices that we make every day. So what does it mean we are copycats of Martha? I don't think so. If Jesus wanted that, why didn't he just clearly tell us, do what Martha does? And that's the one thing. But I don't think that's the one thing he was talking about. Or you could have given us a list of five items, five easy steps for choosing the better way to make a decision. 
He didn't do that either. Jesus is saying, what choice, that choices matter because the choices we make end up to be the life that you're living. The choices you make ends up to be the life that you are living. You choose to take Jesus and follow his path, or you don't. I wonder how many choices we make each day. Sometimes we choose and we make them unconsciously. Sometimes they're quick and easy, aren't they? Then there are other times with great deliberation and struggle. We pray about them. Some choices are insignificant. They've forgotten the next moment or the next day. Other choices have great meaning and significance. And the consequences of that choice are long-lasting. Coming, driving here this morning at before, before about, about six o'clock, I think I left home. I don't think any taxi in this area makes a choice to stop at a red traffic light. But the consequence of not doing that, if there was an accident, is something he would live, or they would have to live with forever. Those consequences that the choices we make Choices in your job, the choices in your spirituality are long-lasting. They're not gone in a second. Our choices, as I said, shape who we are. Our choices shape who we are. They can establish in us patterns and habits of how we see, or see how we are seen and how we act. The words we speak the way we relate to each other. Our choices can set a course for life. Our choices make a difference. I'll give you another example. Because of my preaching schedule, I, I missed many Holy Communion services. And last week, Winita and I said, we need to go and have Holy Communion. And I looked at the preaching schedule and I saw that Kitty Borney was preaching at Trinity last Sunday. So we decided we we're going to go to Trinity, which we did so that we could have Holy Communion with her. It was a wonderful service. And something I took away from that service was very important to me. We, the Lord tells us to love our neighbor. The Lord tells us to love our neighbor. And this is what Reverend Kay was talking about last Sunday. But she said something which I've never thought of before. We all know who our neighbors are. I'm not talking about the people living next to you. I'm talking about the people in the supermarket, the people that are sitting here. They're all our neighbors. But the thought that she left with me is whose neighbor are you? Whose neighbor are you? And are your neighbors happy with you? And is the Lord happy with you as a neighbor? In this particular context, Mary made the better choice. But it was a choice for the time and for the place and for the circumstances. Changing the setting and Martha's choice might have been the better choice. We can see that in Jesus' own life. I want you to listen to this very carefully. We can see this in Jesus' own life. Sometimes Jesus went off by himself to be alone, to be silent, just to be still, to pray, to sit and listen and be present with his father. At those times, he was like Mary. Other times, Jesus was active, on the move, in the middle of people, busy teaching, healing and feeding 5,000, throwing the people out of the temple. He was active on those days, 
He was more like Martha. So you see the difference, the comparison, and that's how you should live your life. That's the message that that little parable is giving us. Don't type yourself into one, one cast. Whilst we might distinguish between Mary and Martha, there's a common theme present. Mary and Martha are two ways of being present. Both ways are necessary, faithful and holy. There's a simple one choice that can be made forever. We should always be identifying with the one on the one hand and the other on the other hand, based on time, based on the place, based on the circumstances. You know, you've probably got sick and tired of me saying these three words over and over again. Stop, look, and listen. Stop where you are. Listen to what, the God, what God is saying to you. And then look over your shoulder. Are you happy with where you are? Are you happy with the choices you've made? Are you happy with those choices are leading you to the life you're currently living? We should always be identifying with the one thing that's needed at that time in those circumstances. What is the better part given to our particular situation? How do we present ourselves? How do we show up to the divine presence of our Lord? Remember, he's always, in, he's always present with us. We can't hide from him like Adam and Eve tried to do. That's the question. Some days, Mary should be our guide. Other days, Martha should be our guide. Either way, we must choose. If you're seeing somebody sitting on the pavement, don't have the thought in your back of your mind, there by the grace of God go I. Rather ask yourself, what can you do to lift that man or that woman from where they are sitting? Some days the choices may mean just sitting quietly and listening to the heart of God speaking to you. Giving you the opportunity to read and study. Just to sit quietly and watch a sunset with your spouse. Or praying for the world as David and I did earlier this morning. Or on other days, it may mean speaking loud words of hope and encouragement, offering actions and compassion and hospitality, seeking forgiveness, making amends, or maybe even climbing a tree with your child. You see, there's always that choice. You can, choice, you can choose to sit quietly and be in the presence of God, or you can go out and do something for, for God. What is the one thing that you need right now? I want to just leave that thought with you. What is the one thing that is worrying you? What is the one thing that you're having to make a decision on? What is the one thing that wakes you up at 3 o'clock in the morning? And what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? What is that one thing in your life right now that's concerning you? What is the one thing that can fix all your problems and let, and let you live a happier life? Maybe that one thing is to open up your heart, truly open up your heart, and let God in. What is the one thing that you need right now in your life? Open your life to Christ. 
choose that. That's the better part. That's the part that will hold you close, close to him. Hold that choice solely in your life. We choose our way through life. Our relationships. We choose our relationships. We choose our faith. We choose our salvation. Those are the choices we make that dictate our life every day. As I close, I, I want to leave you, I want to just leave you with a thought, a little story. Picture in your mind a young child, and this little child, his mother or father, comes to her, him with a box of chocolates with all those brightly wrapped little chocolate papers. And she looks down, and the mother, the parent says, you're allowed to take one chocolate. Choose one chocolate, only one. Does the little child look at the box and choose the biggest one because that will last the longest? Or does she choose her favorite, the peppermint cream? Which one does he choose? Perhaps the child's decisions may seem trivial to us as adults, but they're important to that child. And yes, we have a, a broader perspective than that young, guy, that young girl. That is the question of making choices, to have an external perspective on life and the decisions is to know how to choose. Know how to choose. Let the Word of God help you make that choice. In summary, I'd like to show you the next couple of slides. Mary's problem was not what she did, but how she did it. As a woman, we know that work is necessary but Martha allowed her work to distract her from her worship. She allowed her work to distract her from her worship. Martha probably huffed and puffed in the kitchen, banging pot lids. I hear this sometimes when I'm watching TV. Mary was focused on Christ and she was oblivious to Martha's pots banging in the kitchen. Now I was watching the cricket. Martha publicly rebuked Mary, telling, uh, telling on her to Jesus in front of guests. Instead of, uh, instead of agreeing with Martha, Jesus gently rebuked her. Because she valued works and, and faith, Martha was thinking too much of what she had to do for Christ. It's like somebody saying, I want to prove that I love Jesus more. Remember what Paul said, it's not the deeds that will get you into heaven. What we believe is more important than what we do. What we believe motivates what we do. A back way around. You see that? What we believe will tell us what to do. In conclusion, both women love Jesus. We should not be harder on Martha than Jesus was. God uses all kinds of people. If we blend with the two together, we get a wonderful example of the balance of work and worship. The balance between work and worship. Jesus said to Martha, and so to us here today, when we're in the Martha role, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing, the one thing is the Word of God. The one thing is the Word of God. Jesus is telling us to find balance in our lives. 
and in our discipleship, in the way we go about worshiping. Most certainly, he wants us to serve others, but he also knows that our faith, but he also knows that our faith to grow and to be strong, he, we need to be, to be fed spiritually with the words that, we, that come from him. Coming to church on a Sunday, friends, is not enough. We need to take time away from our distractions of life and for us to grow spiritually. We need to spend time with God each day in word and sometimes in deed. We need to allow ourselves that quiet time that will enable us to listen and to hear what God is saying to us. Remember what the psalmist said, Be still and know that I am God. Remember, in being still and listening and hearing, we will learn to know and feel that love of God in our lives. Amen. Let us just close our eyes now. Think of those things that are, that are troubling you. Think of the choices and the, cho the choices that you might have to make over the next week. Think of the choices you made in the last week. Think about the peace that we're searching for. And let us ask God for that peace which passes all understanding to keep our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ who knows our deeds and calls us to be fed on his word. Let us open our hearts, our minds and our lives to him today. Let us make that commitment. Let us be his disciples, his friends, his workers, but most importantly, let us be his servants, diligently doing what the word is telling us to do. Let us be a combination of Mary and Martha, depending on our circumstances. Amen. Let us stand now as we sing our, our final song. What a friend we have in Jesus. Please stand.
Technology is letting me down again. Um, may I just ask we need to just to press the, the next follow slide. Yeah, thank you. Let us join our spiritual hands as we share the grace with each other. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Let us say and sing together till we meet again. It's okay, you've gone back. Leave it. Yeah.